engineer 775 here uh, some of the comments I received on my water siphoning video um, were about water leveling I think I made mention of it and like I said I've used water to pretty much level all the foundations or footings or areas uh, whether it's a swimming pool or a building I don't have a transit I kind of like the old school way of doing it and that's using water level now you can do it just with a garden hose but what makes it really easy is to use two of these these are Myers water levels I'll put a link in the description and you can see the the water level here obviously water seeks a level and so this is the easiest way simplest way to to level something and I would just kinda I'm in my garden <laughs> one of my gardens and I just uh, marked out like a 14 by 12 space I'm not really building anything here but I wanted to show you some simple techniques. If you were going to build, pour a slab, pour some footings, a way to get it uh, right on the money. And uh, I just like putting a concrete base to all the buildings. I don't care if it's a root cellar or a building that you have something to anchor to. I like to use red heads and other concrete anchors so there's no upload. If there is a wind upload in the created, that you're anchored to a lot of concrete. So um, just building on posts and framing up that way is uh, lends itself to a, a weak structure so um, taking the water tubes the water levels and once you've got them leveled them here I'm just gonna make a mark and you always want to pick the lowest you start at the lowest area because if I pick the highest area instead of level I might be too high for this post so I'm just kind of making a mark on my batter boards here and uh, and again these have caps on them and if you're moving around, I recommend that you don't want to, if you lose any water during this whole process, you've thrown off your level and you'll have to start over. So I cap it, and this has a shut off on it too. So I go ahead and I turn it off. Make sure everything's tight. If you have any leaks in your gaskets, you're going to have failure too, or your hose. So I've made a, made a mark there, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark these. These are batter boards. I'm going to actually put some boards to connect up here. I'm just making my water level mark. So I try to keep these together. And um, what what you can do, what you want to do, is you really need another another person, and you make sure that you keep this water level mark here, and then you need to set this water level mark over here. So it's pretty easy to see with these clear tubing. I'm lining up on my pencil mark there, and I need uh, to line up on my pencil mark here. So if my assistant just hold that tube there. Pretty good. And then you got to decide whether you want to read the top of the meniscus or the bottom of the meniscus on the water bubble. So um, I'm just going to read the top. It's easier for me to see the top than the bottom. So I make my mark. And then again, this will be the this will be my uh, calibration mark for everything that I do on this this building. Okay, we've put our batter boards up on our four corners and we started running our, our mason string and you can see, I hope you can see on the camera the water level right here and um, it's right on the money with the string and this corner that we've established that would be uh, we could measure from this corner down to a, a grade stake and that would be the top of the footing or the top of the monolithic slab, whatever you're pouring, or your concrete block, whatever. The, the goal of this, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is a quick way. You can throw up some batter boards with some scrap lumber, with some mason string and a water level. You can establish, I picked a, a slope here that's sloping off in two directions, so it's not something you can easily eyeball for level. So you want to use water to do the leveling, and so I got the um, my witness is on that batter board and then I'm just checking here so you can see the see the tube and if I go down that one's gonna go up and, it's, and again you can see it going up and down you want to make sure that you give it time to settle out once she settles out you know you're good if you got really good eyes you can see or if it's a small building you're, you'll be able to see the the mark on the other side so you can kinda get close to where you are. So I can kind of see the uh, meniscus, the water level on the other witness and I'm right there. So I mean with this type of style leveling you are going to be within a sixteenth of an inch. I just did my generator shed. It was on the money within a sixteenth and so it just makes life easier once you get your foundation right the way anything is in life, right? Get your uh, 
foundation correct and you'll be fine as you build. So we're good to go here right now. Um, again, this was just to show you how to level. I'm going to show you a couple other things that you can use these water levels for. They're great techniques. And um, so again, this is how you get started to uh, level up a, a pad or a footing or a block wall using water levels and they just they just don't lie as long as you get the air out of your line you want to make sure you get all the air out of the hose and every time you move it cap it recap it again um, so you don't lose any water you lose water you start over you got air bubbles in it you start over so you want to make sure you take your time to make sure the hose is full of water and every time you move it because you're gonna get up and move and you could throw some water out of the other end and you've you've thrown off your uh, calibration um, so let's uh, show you some more things Okay, another great um, use for uh, the water levels is cutting the tops of posts even if it bothers you looking out and you see posts up and down and you want to level out an area, it's a great way to use these. I've got my witness here, my witness post I'm going to cut three other, two other posts to and we'll hold that one there. I'm going to go over here, uncap, get close to where we need to be. Really low. Okay. Make our our mark there. We'll cap. And then I'll go over to the final post. little low over here. All right. Pretty close. Good. Close enough for fence work. All right, so we can cap that. If we want to make another cut or anything. So, pretty cool to be able to use water to do a lot of different things. So, we'll just uh, let's we'll figure out what else we can do with these, but for now, set those to the side. Let's level out our fence post. somewhat level fence post and uh, that's a great another great use for the water level so all right I need to level up my gate anyway and now I have something to go by I have a uh, perfectly level fence post to adjust my gate okay all right um, there's a lot of other things that we could do with this uh, you could uh, come up with a like a witness pole just say you wanted to level out an area that you were putting in a swimming pool or you just wanted to level out for what to for anything you could have a post in these water levels and just make sure that you're good all the way around kind of how I believe the possibly the Egyptian pyramid in Giza was leveled I think it's 13 acres plus or minus an inch how do you do that well, they had water from the Nile. They probably could have done it that way. Anyway, that's a side tangent. I just went down. Um, but uh, water, it doesn't lie. So you, you could, it always seeks a level, and it works, uh, works fantastic for simple uh, construction purposes, farming purposes, just checking. I mean, you could level up fence posts. There's a lot of things you could do. If you had to level a huge area for whatever reason, you wanted to start level, um, or just to have a nice even grade then you could use water levels and a pole and go around and make sure you know if you're six inches here you got to remove that dirt if you're low you got to add dirt so it's a great way to to uh, to level up a space 
and again it establishes a good foundation from whence to from where you can measure off of and use that as from for building everything in your house or your barn or your sheds or whatever you're doing all right this is engineer 775 signing off okay another thing that can be handy sometimes you can just use a level on the long board but again the water levels come in handy you can see that line there where you can make a mark and cut your post and then if you look over on the other side we've got our, our witness and uh, the water line there and that's where it should be cut and I would say you know the levels are going to be more accurate than using I mean the water levels are going to be more accurate than using a stick and a level so uh, it's another good application cutting fence posts pouring um, your footings your slabs cutting off posts that are just out whether you're building a pole barn or a shed it can be very handy to have these water levels. They don't cost much, very easy to use, just need a garden hose and two water levels. Remember to, remember to the, what I show, told you about the caps. Make sure when you move them, you, turn, you plug the cap up. If you lose any water, you got to start over. Obviously, you're going to have a different level um, calibration point there. So, okay, I think that's it. I was thinking about other things I could show you, but uh, for now, that's, that's pretty good. If you want to test to see if anything is level that's already been built, it's another great way to do it using water. And um, that's it. If you have any other ideas about what um, I could have done with this water level video, let me know. This is Engineer 775 signing out.